So let us talk about image restoration. As the name suggests, this is restoring an image. So the goal or the aim is to restore or reconstruct the original image that has been degraded. So we have some a priori knowledge of the degradation process. So unlike this uh, image enhancement, image restoration is largely uh, an objective process. So we optimize the goodness criteria rather than subjective process. See, what we do is we model the degradation by a process H and then add random noise. So this is the model of the image degradation restoration process. How degradation is uh, done or how it is, um, it might have proceeded. So we assume that this is uh, our original image, right? FXY is our uh, original image. This is, uh, you know, applied or by some degradation function, say, say HSXY, and then some noise eta XY has been added. And then we get a degraded image that is GXY. So what our aim is to apply restoration filters on this degraded image so that this image can be retrieved and this we call it as F cap XY or the restored image. So, uh, you know, expression wise, this G GXY is, you have this image, which is convolution of uh, HXY. This is the degradation function and addition of some uh, noise. So as convolution is equivalent to multiplication in our frequency domain. So we write like this. So uh, because noise is there and we are actually uh, dealing with noise. So there has to be, and we should talk about these noise models. And these noise mo models are actually characterized by their probability density function PDF. And most common is the Gaussian. See, this is the Gaussian. And uh, if uh, this is somewhat, uh, uh, you know, skewed, then we say these are uh, relay that, that is non-negative. These are, see, there is some, some sort of skewness is there. This is a relay. This is non-negative. And this models uh, noise in radar images, relay, model noise in radar range and velocity images. This is uh, Erlang or gamma exponential that is uh, non-negative. And this models noise in laser images. Then we have this, uh, this uh, you know, uniform images. This models quantize noise like this. This is a uniform noise. Then the salt and pepper, only two A and B are there, the salt and pepper. So this models malfunctioning pixels or timing errors. Most common is the uh, Gaussian. This is given by uh, this graph. So estimating uh, the noise parameters, how we are going to do it. Uh, we can have a test pattern, which is this kind of uh, pattern, which is used to illustrate the characteristics of noise PDS, probability density function, which was shown just now. So often we can estimate parameters from our knowledge of the sensor characteristics. Or otherwise, what you can do, we can take images of a flat surface and look at the histogram. So this is, uh, you know, you can have, uh, you can very well view three portions of this image. And what uh, is done, Gaussian is applied on this um, image, which we just saw this image. Gaussian noise is applied and this is these are the images uh, and these are the uh, histogram corresponding histogram so this is the image previous image with added uh, Gaussian noise with added our Rayleigh noise and this is with adding gamma noise and this is how our this um, histogram varies right this is uh, the continuation of it this is exponential exponential uh, is added uniform noise and most commonly this salt and pepper also we know it by the name impulse impulse noise so see there are only two points in uniform you can see a uniform mm, this uniform histogram as i earlier showed you now, if we have noise only degradation, what we do, we, uh, we first consider just additive noise, means this image is subjected to eta xy, that is noise, and this is the uh, gxy, means uh, the degraded 
image or function. So the noise is unknown. So uh, subtracting it from this g x y is not a realistic op op option because it is not known. In fact, what we do is um, enhancement and restoration are basically uh, the same in this particular case. So enhancement, restoration. If there is only noise, additive noise, then uh, is restoration uh, boils down to our enhancement image enhancement only. So consider this original image. Uh, we can apply these mean filters because it, this is actually enhancement only. For example, arithmetic mean or geometric mean. Arithmetic mean is what we do. We take these um, you know filters, filter with these points, simple filter, standard box filter, these values and uh, consider these values 10 10 10 and here it is 1 so what we do we just uh, add them and divided it by uh, the num this this number of values so how much is this value cost is around 81 this 10 10 10 81 divided by uh, number of values 9 and if we uh, find this geometric mean this is given by you know mm, these values multiplied 10 into 10 into 10 and then again multiplied by 1 and to the power of uh, this 3 by 3 matrix, so 1 by 9, that is square root of uh, this uh, Q, third, uh, ninth root of this value. So what we get is uh, around 7.2, the value of uh, standard box filter applied gives F cap as 9, where geometric mean applied F cap is 7.2. So this geometric mean tends to lose uh, less image detail. And this is... Uh, this comes to 7.2. I'll show you how uh, the differences are. So this is the X-ray image, and uh, this is the image which is corrupted by additive Gaussian noise. And this is the result of filtering with an arithmetic mean a filter of size 3 by 3, while this is the result of filtering with a geometric mean filter of the same size. So you can very well see that these areas are not very much degraded when we use uh, this geometric mean. Now coming to order statistics filter, uh, there are ranking, rank based means uh, median based filters. So rank or order uh, the values within the window in this order statistics filters, what happens? We rank the values and uh, one of them is median filter. So we choose the median uh, value. So what is the use of this uh, median value? This is unaffected by a large fraction of outliers that is up to 50%. For example, if you have a short spike or outlier which is not uh, at all coming to that range of values which are neighborhood. So that, that uh, must not come uh, which actually happens in average filter. So median takes a median value so these outliers can be, can be you know, avoided. Then we have this alpha trim mean filter. What happens in this alpha trim mean filter? Uh, this this area D by 2 and uh, D by 2 uh, lowest and highest D by 2 values are not taken into consideration. Only these values are taken. So the beauty of averaging and the um, intent to keep these outliers away both are being facilitated or both are uh, you know adopted in alpha trim mean filter so um, this is how uh, you know this is very very much uh, similar to mean filter but they are uh, unaffected by outliers most of the time so see these are the results this is the image which is corrupted by impulse or salt and paper noise uh, with probabilities uh, pa and pv that is salt and uh, pepper both 0.1 this is the result of one pass with a median filter of 3 by 3. This is the result of processing of B with this filter again and again applying this filter. Um, you know, twice applying this filter, the result is like this. So you can see that uh, we have a very good result of median filter. And also, if you take uh, this example, this is the image which is, uh, you know, corrupted by additive uniform noise this is the image which is additionally corrupted by additive salt and pepper noise and this image uh, is filtered with a 5 by 5 say um, arithmetic mean filter this is by geometric mean filter this is by median filter and this is by alpha trim um, 
mean filter with d is equal to 5 so if i take this area this particular area see alpha trim uh, has actually uh, tried to keep this value uh, more intact now coming to adaptive mean filter uh, what happens that it does not blur uh, image near boundaries if this is uh, the mean uh, if you draw this noise near our boundary so if we apply uh, uh, not near the no boundary it is okay but near boundary this tends to make the boundary like this okay this is how uh, the boundary region will become so we just want to avoid this but uh, the main thing is that how do you know if you are near a boundary so we'll use the local covariance say this sig sigma sub l that is sigma l square that is local um, variance this uh, uh, this is uh, the expression which we'll use f cap xy uh, which will be you know gxy and subtraction of this uh, sigma noise by sigma uh, sigma eta by sigma uh, local region and gxy minus ml ml is the mean of that local region so the local variance sigma this l square is large compared to the estimated noise variance sigma n square uh, in the boundary region so if uh, it is not a boundary region then sigma uh, this sub l will be equal to sigma eta uh, square I mean, sigma this do both were both are equal so this will come boil down to gxy only see uh, sorry ml only actually this inside a region that is away from from the boundary this will be equal to local mean only but near boundaries what happens this sigma l is quite larger or very large than this sigma n square that is why we get we this term will be relieved and we'll get the uh, f cap as uh, directly gxy so this is uh, an example uh, this is image corrupted by additive gaussian noise of zero mean and variance 1000 this is the result of arithmetic mean this is the result of geometric mean and this is the result of adaptive noise reduction filtering and the filter is of size 7 by 7 so see the boundary areas are uh, you know well taken care of this is the blow up of that area again see a uh, good result now restoring spatial degradation uh, we may consider a degradation process h like this that you have this h process on this initial image and adding that eta xy we get a degraded image so h is linear if uh, this um, expression holds and h is po position invariant if this this uh, expression hold like a comes out b comes out if we apply this h on uh, f1 and f2 and position variant if we uh, apply for the neighborhood area a and b and we get gx and y for the that uh, area now linear position invariance if h is a linear shift invariant as just uh, being told then the application of h to f uh, is given by this value what happens this is uh, you know in a and in b uh, integral from minus infinity to infinity f a b will be f h x minus a y minus b means uh, h is uh, linear shift invariant then the application of h of f is given by this so this is the convolution of f and h nothing but convolution of f and h hence this h x y is the impulse impulse response of h nothing but the impulse response of h now uh, image restoration we can have this linear degradation the model uh, we have al already seen like this so if we know the degradation function h u v we can undo its effect this is for the whole idea of restoration so how can we estimate the degradation function there are three methods uh, by estimation uh, or estimating the by this image observation estimation by experiment experimentation and estimating by the modeling so estimating by image observation we take a small area of the image say g sub s uv and if we know that uh, or if we know what the non degraded function f F, f sub s uv is supposed to be we get like this hs uv will be just given by this small area by fs uv and if uh, we want to estimate by the experimentation and we using the the same imaging system we take a picture 
of our bright spot that is an impulse so this is the model of degradation within a scale factor hgv is equal to gu and estimating uh, or estimation by modeling we can analytically derive uh, the this from the degradation for example motion blur and atmospheric blur so let us see this just now because we have already discussed this atmospheric blur this is given by a somewhat uh, gaussian value huv this is gaussian and this is atmospheric degradation so this is the example of atmospheric blur and this is the illustration of the atmospheric turbulence model this is negligible uh, turbulence this is severe turbulence mild turbulence low turbulence right these are the images will come and then talking about this motion blur if motion blur is there this uh, gxy is given by uh, f uh, x minus x0 t uh, y minus y0 t dt where x0 t for linear motion over time so this will be the time at by t and bt by t so h u v b v will become like this as sin pi u a plus v b uh, e to the power minus j pi u a plus v b by pi u a plus v b so this is the original image this is the result of blurring using this equation where a is and b is equal to 0.1 and t is equal to 1 so this is how we can um, you know uh, use this motion blur technique or uh, simulate then coming to inverse filtering the simplest approach to undoing the degradation is very simple you take this gv gv divided by hv nothing serious nothing simple can that so the problem is we also enhance the noise by oil um, noise by doing this so what we do uh, we add fuv then uh, add n uv eta uv and hv the frequency domain um, result of uh, this eta noise and hv so to avoid dividing by zero uh, when hv is small usually at high frequencies we can limit analysis to the lower frequencies so this is inverse filtering simplest this is the result of inverse filtering uh, effect of noise we this is the result of using the full filter result of h cut of uh, uh, outside a radius of 40 this is radius of 70 and this is radius of 85 so these are the examples this is how you know you take hv and you don't go to those those position this is the value which i'm talking about only this 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 is this is the radius of filter which has been applied so in summary we model image degradation as a, a linear position invariant process followed by additive noise and restoration is done random noise reduction is best carried out in the spatial domain using convolution mask and uh, correcting period noise periodic noise and undoing the effect of blur is best carried out in the frequency domain so hope you got a bit idea about image restoration thank you so much take care